everyone else has always separate recorded it. So like here's a good reason. In order to use more imagery, the IMAX film does not include a soundtrack. It specifies a separate six-channel magnetic film synchronized system. You know, it's basically that it's the you know, same system designed for Cinerama, but it's the same system that most most countries use. I mean, like, uh, uh, this is why you can, people, you know, uh, you'll look and say, you know, that guy, I, he just cussed everybody out. That wasn't there. And then they'll say, he's going to, he, and then they'll say, and Rebecca Sunnybrook Farm is going to be here this afternoon. We have to be careful because you don't want to say any four-letter words. And underneath them, because they don't record the soundtrack when they're working. Soundtrack is then it put in in a controlled area where everybody can. They, they sit there and watch their voices, and they simply, you know. Well, it's almost like an animated movie. Yeah. You know, like an animation. They watch the thing, right, it's, and then they record it. It's it's like uh, like we have things where. She basically dwells forever when she's trying to match the sound up, and I can match the sound up within a syllable. Mm -hmm. Because I grew up on a separate sound system. Because uh, we would do, when I was doing independent things in the 50s and early 60s, you, if you brought out the sound stuff, they chase you off the area. So if you brought out the camera and just some people, well, there's no, there's no sound with it, so so, but we then we then go into a control room, which didn't cost a whole lot of money, and you know, sound lock, and you sit there and record all that. They put it up on a black and white thing. You sit there, and spend a few hours doing the voices at one time, and generally, uh, it's like I I never really got to speak in movies because I have a nasal metallic voice. But if I did get a role, you know, uh, something sometimes they'd have somebody come in and they would. And you know what he's really like, don't you? You know, this big, big man. It probably looked like I was, actually I was that age, folks. I'm not supposed to tell people I was that kid, so. <laughs> yeah, but, um, you know, like I said, she's, she's from an era where she doesn't understand separate audio recording. She's funny, she's from an era where they kept it all recorded directly on the stuff, which is technically the era I was born into, but by the time I got to be and I got through film school, we were, we were always using a separate sound system because of the, you know, the hit and run way of, we were doing. You, you, you still have film permits, you don't want to have sound equipment out. You got a great big sound thing. Gorilla sound filmmaking. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to film in certain areas of the city of Los Angeles. You can well, if you bring this huge sound thing out, it's like telling everybody. Uh, you're telling, hey, I don't have a film permit. So, uh, but I love the, we got the projection system, I love the, it basically had a 15,000 kilowatt xenon short, short arc lamp used in the projectors because the, uh, the 17 or 70 millimeters are not ready enough for the, uh, the 586 magnification. I can also tell you that basically there are, um, there are some projectors that basically people are really pissed off at because the projection systems, uh, they want to switch back and forth between two, two D IMAX and 3D IMAX because, like I said, 3D IMAX is not where the money's coming from. It's from the special events in 2D, mm -hmm. and they have a problem syncing the things back up. Once you take the lens off, it doesn't necessarily work well. So a lot of people are using, they're 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 keeping the 2Ds on when they're showing 3D, and they're keeping the 3Ds on when they're shooting 2D, because it is, uh, like she said, uh, we have a 3D camera, mm -hmm. and she does not like syncing the camera back up. Because when we take the 3D lens off to shoot with 2D, it, she considers it a pain in the ass to do it, where I just can do it. It's the same way as a guy that basically, uh, um, that you know, you know, it's either somebody my age or somebody really young. Because my age, we dealt with the problem because the, that's, I'm from an era when, when 3D would basically was being used and it stopped being used. Today, 3D is becoming more and more prominent, so the young guys, are learning, they go in like this and okay, it's done. And then the people that are her age go, uh, yeah, they, they don't understand how it's done. But uh, basically, also, uh, another system that the, the uh, here's a good one too that the uh, basically the projectionists are required to wear body armor when changing the handlings of these cases if the grass breaks because the danger from flying quartz is really bad. It's basically they're using they're using a bomb in an IMAX, 
Imagine protect. Uh, we're talking the same as if they was you know in the hurt locker wearing an outfit like that to change your lens. It almost sounds archaic. It is archaic. Oh, no wonder why. But remember, we're going digital. And when you go digital, you're going to have a digital projector. The digital projection system does not require a bulb because you're not shining a light through anything. Mm -hmm. Which is another reason why the theaters all want to go digital. Mm -hmm. They know, but uh, oh, here's where we got. So we got multiple projector types. Like I said, some of the projectors really screw up. But here's what here's what most people are really concerned about. Like I said, some of the projector systems can do 2D and 3D both, and some can only do 2D, some can only do 3D. I'm assuming the older theaters only do 2D or 3D. The newer theaters can do 2D and 3D because it is a change in the system. So I know she doesn't do the technical garbage. I do the technical garbage. So uh -huh. I know most people really don't give a damn what I'm saying now, but they, they care about this part. So this is what she's more interested in right there now. What was that? The theater part because she actually was. Uh, we we did do. Uh, I have a looking at both sets of the theaters, the IMAX and the traditional theater for showing a 3D, and there is a significant difference. Well, you know, one of the things that we did, we had seen, what is it, Tron in IMAX 3D. Yeah. And this is where we discovered that using 3D glasses was not the same for um, IMAX versus the regular. Yeah. So we thought we'd just take our 3D glasses into there. And then we went and saw Pirates of the Caribbean, and we saw it in 3D, but we saw it in the IMAX version as well as the regular 3D. Yeah. And there was a lot more difference than I would have expected. Yeah, there's a, a huge difference. Uh, the only difference being the same is that they uh, they tell you that they don't look like anaglyph because it darkens the picture well. The polarized glasses that are used for 3D in either IMAX and and uh, darken it and anyway. darken it anyway. You take the glasses off, you got a really bright picture. You put the glasses on, it darkens them. But mm -hmm. there is a, it is light and day though between. IMAX glasses and 3D glasses. Mm -hmm. There's no comparison between the two. And we're not just talking about the size, but the same also applies to the theater. Because yep. when you look at the theater set up with the IMAX, well, actually, let's go back to the, let's start with the screen size, first yeah. of all. You know, it, it, it differs significantly from conventional theaters. The increased resolution allows the audience to be much closer to the screen. Typically, all rows are with one screen height. Conventional theater seating runs 8 to 12 screen heights, which means you're about, you know, you can be, you know, we're talking way, I mean, that, okay, a regular theater goes like this. IMAX theaters go like this. I mean, just go into a thing and you can remember walking. If you, if you go inside the theater, you'll notice, because if, if here were the seats, okay, here's the screen, the seats like this would go at an angle like in a regular theater. I don't, yeah. Do we have the exact percentage? Uh, Okay, uh, basically, uh, all the rows of seats are set at a steep angle up to 30 degrees. And so that would be in an IMAX. So you're in a higher... Yeah. Right? So you feel like that you're like you're into the screen much more than a regular 3D movie versus the other one you feel like you're sitting back and looking at it. But uh, a standard IMAX screen, you know, there are bigger, but 72 by 58 foot, whereas, you know, it tends to be like this. Where uh, a motion picture screen tends to be, you know, like like that, you know, and that's the difference. Um, uh, and actually, the largest one is eight stories high and covers ten thousand square foot. You know, something. Wow, that is amazing to see. That. Uh, the largest digital IMAX screen, uh, which is a hundred foot wide, is located in Wichita, Kansas. The digital is being like we were. I was talking to you, the technical side, which is basically it's no longer. You know, you're not going to have a six-foot roll. You're going to have a computer a hard drive doing your movie, which projectionists don't like. I'm assuming projectionists would rather have a computer than having to wear body armor. Yeah, I would think so. Yeah, but like I said, um, the, the the seating is is really significant to uh, like in the IMAX. It's it's like a, like a 180 design almost all mm -hmm. the way, whereas in the regular theater, it's just like. You know, like you got a box, you're going like this entirely up. Mm -hmm. There's no off to the sides of the screen. There's a screen in front of you for the most part. You're, you know, the seats are setting. You know, you know, okay, in a, okay, in a, the crappiest seats in a, in a standard theater are the ones that are setting right up by the screen. Mm -hmm. Whereas in IMAX, this you can still see your picture setting up by the screen because mm -hmm. you're not you're not setting like this. You're setting like this. So you, like I said, we, we did that one time actually, basically put an orchestra 
in that area because of the curvature of the thing. And mm -hmm. and there's not as many seats in an IMAX theater as there is in a regular theater. No, I was actually kind of surprised about that. And uh, so it's uh, and and they also have wider rows because they're trying to accommodate a different style of seat. And the seating is also almost totally different. The chair seats are almost different than I No, you know what I did like? I did like the reserve seating. Yeah. So, you know, it's like you pick out your seats ahead of time. There's no, like, oh, let's get there early so we can make sure we get a good seat. Yeah, I mean, you can get reserve seating in the other theaters, but the IMAX is, because um, it, it's the same thing as in, Nobody wants to sit on the sides of a movie theater. Mm -hmm. They all want to sit in the middle, so the reserved seating allows everybody to sit in the middle. Mm -hmm. And you try, uh, we try to set maybe, was it, 10 rows back at the most. Mm -hmm. You know, so, uh, it's, uh, it where actually you can put your feet up on a, a thing, so you can, and, but uh, it is different. I mean, um, it just everything about the IMAX, the sound system, I don't know if we get the sound system, but the sound system in an IMAX, is tremendously superior to the sound system in a regular theater. Mm -hmm. Because in a regular theater, you are this direction, and I'm actually this way. So the sound is surround, is surround sound 5, Dolby 5.1, which is also what we're now editing stuff into. So the sound system is a lot better. If you notice, we have a hollowness in a lot of what we're doing. It's because we now have 5.1 Dolby surround sound. Mm -hmm. So, but. Um, Here's one too. We got Max 3. To create the illusion of depth, the IMAX 3D processes use a separate camera lenses to represent the left and right eyes. Uh, they're selected by two point. We've done this about 2.5 inches from. You go from the center of your nose and you go 2.5 off. There's the area between both that makes it like your right eye. Just go like that. Go 2.5 in the center. You can make up your own IMAX thing there, folks. Mm -hmm. Uh, it talks about polarizing, two, 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 two gadgets, uh, two screens. Um, okay, uh, basically we have, uh, uh, here I think we're getting close to the double IMAX HD frame rate means that each IMAX HD reel lasts about half as long. So look at it this way, folks. You, the better, the high def now, we've already went from, we went from the 2D to 3D to high def and high def in 3D and it means that that uh, you know that reel that lasts that, that, that six foot reel that lasts uh, you know uh, an hour and a half mm -hmm. that has to be changed during the middle of the movie mm -hmm. and, uh, and since it uses a two reel system guess what that does mm -hmm. you're using a two reel system and one of the reels have both you know this reel has to be changed this reel has to be changed that means there's a hell of a disaster during the crossover of your tapes because That's a pain how are you going to move a six-foot reel? Well, you know how they do it? They've got a changer. They have a big, 